rules and obligations. So something's got to change and give. And I can tell you, being in Congress right now, Republicans and Democrats are all over the map on this. All over the map. You're talking about two potential yeah. bills. Absolutely. There are another few that are thinking about... Well, majority, the majority of Congress representatives have signed on with Bill 1351. But you have not. Not yet. Thank you. Uh, uh, hold, hold, hold. You got one. Hi, Joe. Another Thanks. question yep. on, on any other issue. Thank you, Joe, for having us on all day. A retired military person watched the news lately, and I see that John McCain is going after retired military benefits. And what do you know about uh, the situation? So, what in particular is he advocating or doing? He's trying to go after keeping us out of the military health care system, which we pay for. Yeah. He's trying to cut back on our retirement benefits as far as our uh, pay structure. We're, I've already been into this for six or seven years now. Yeah. And now all of a sudden he's going after our, <coughs> our pension and stuff. Well, I don't understand that. John McCain's doing it. Yeah. Um, well, when did he turn coach? I mean, four or five years ago? Yeah. John, John McCain's been speaking out of both sides of his mouth for a while. Yeah. John McCain, let's be honest, John McCain should have retired 10 to 15, 20 years ago. Um, there is strong resistance in the House. McCain can't do anything without the House doing something. And I can tell you what, there's no way the Republican House is going to approve of any cuts or changes to military benefits. It ain't gonna go anywhere. Thanks. It ain't gonna go anywhere. Hey, Joe. And, and it surprises me that McCain's lead that charge on this. Yeah, that, 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 huh? But then again, he was he's just trying to too. Yeah. Uh, uh, I know, I know, I know. I know. Yeah. Uh, again, respectfully, uh, people like John McCain have just been in Washington way too long. They're part of the problem. They're part of the problem. Yes, sir. I want to talk to you about AT&T. A while back in your Facebook page, a congressional one, you made a comment about that you were in support of uh, AT&T taking over T-Mobile. That company needs a, AT&T needs a major smackdown. I'm seeing an article more recently, a couple days ago, where they're overcharging, inflating the data usage by as much as 300% for people, mostly with iPhones, iPads. The phone is physically turned off. And they're still ringing up the data charges and charging the customers for it. Well, you and I have talked about that. That, that kind of stuff has always got to be looked at and investigated. I mean, in general, when it comes to this merger... All uh, they're doing is just the, they're trying to eliminate another competitor. Less right. choice for the customers, less competition. I, yeah, in, in general... All they're doing I, is rebuilding their monopoly. Look, in general, I believe... Uh, the government needs to stay out of any competition, uh, stay out of any company wanting to buy up another company. So you're good with monopolies? You don't think the government should try to stop monopolies? I'm good. Yeah, in general, I'm good with the marketplace generally sorting itself out. Uh, and I've and also when there are abuses, that's when the government interferes. I've also but I'm very loath, I'm very loath to have my government tell a company how to operate. Because as soon as uh, AT&T announced that they were going to take over T-Mobile, Verizon came out and said, well, if they're allowed to do that, then we'll just take over uh, U.S. Cellular. So that means you're going to have even less companies out there, less competition, less choice for the people. And then they're going to be going back to their old ways. Because when AT&T, every time they took over a, they took over a phone company, when they were before uh, Southwest Bell, who's reforming the uh, Bell monopoly again, they took over a phone company in San Diego. Six months later, the people out there were complaining of poor service and higher prices. And you know what? You know what? In general, if you're a market guy, we are the ones who reward and penalize companies for getting too big and, 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 and penalizing companies whose service and pricing is too high. We do. But we do. Not not in the this government. market, there aren't that many choices the way it is, and to reduce even one is huge. But hey. where 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 does it stop? Where do you? How easily do you want your because government getting involved? Part of the problem involved? is with this service. Um, you, they need government help to build their network. No, I know. You know I, 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 well, no, I know. So That's then, don't tell me the government's going to give them help to build up these huge networks, but then they're allowed to monopolize the the market, uh, like, 
this guy pointed out, you know, driving up prices, ripping off customers. And AT&T wants to buy T-Mobile not to increase um, for nothing more than to eliminate competition. It's already been leaked out from a memo that came out from the attorneys that represented AT&T that AT&T does not need T-Mobile to build out their network. Don't it's all a big fallacy. They're going to use it to build the network Don't either. Don't everything you read. Again, sure. there are complicated factors here in that this is space that the government's got to go out. Um, in general, though, again, this is not a done deal. So it's being looked at the merger. In general, I am very low to tell to tell, to have my government tell a company how to operate. So again, we're, we're not. This Did you see that, that program, the Long Distance Warriors, about MCI on PBS? That was an interesting program about how they broke up the Bell Telephone and everything, and what they were trying to keep MCI from even connecting into their network. Look, when the government get, everything when, the, when the government gets involved in most things, generally they tend to mess things up. The government's been involved in our housing industry for 40 years, longer than 40 years. Uh, don't don't blame the uh, the mortgage crisis uh, and the housing crisis we went through on any sort it's of. It's partially delay. on the government's. It's partially on the big banking families for hey, restricting the do money. Do me a favor. Let me finish. Big banks and the marketplace responds to government policies. Mm -hmm. And your government has had a policy in this country for 50 years that everybody should own a home. And they have dictated They've the marketplace. They've been doing that for a good number of years. Everybody has to have a house. And I don't want my government doing that. I don't want my government deciding who should and shouldn't be in a home. That's not the government. That's what I agree with you. Be regulating mortgage-backed securities that are chopped up, and you have hedge funds betting against their own <laughs> their own investors. Absolutely. Shouldn't the government do something there's, to stop that? Because there, half of it stopped. That was a huge generator for this whole problem. But not what, people buying houses. But what alone. enabled? But what? Yes. But what enabled the banking industry to do that? Why the did they do that? The fact that Fox was well, guarding the head house. Frank, Barney Frank, uh, uh, Dodd Frank, Fannie and Freddie, I mean, all of this, the government got involved and basically told big banks, you need to make it easy for people to buy What about letting big banks buy up small commercial banks and there again take over the market and be able to bet against their own investors? And part of the problem is these people in the SEC and the regulatory commissions are all hired from these big banks. Well, it, they're, it, all, they're all in it hand in hand. It needs not, to be reformed. It's not that there doesn't need to be oversight. There needs to be reform. And we still haven't reformed it when this took place back in 2008. And they still haven't changed the rules to okay. keep them from selling off these derivatives of the mortgage-backed securities. Oh, they're changing the rules. Joe, they're changing look at the, the people, Paulson and whoever else, that keep going from a big bank then they go into Fed government, then they go back into the banks, and they just keep rotating. I agree with you about that. <coughs> That's not the problem. That's not the problem. The problem is you got to be consistent. And I don't want government meddling in the marketplace. Yeah, they, they, they move from, from Goldman Sachs to the White House. I, I understand all of that. But you got to be consistent, and it's not the private marketplace that created this mess. What created this mess is your government, which has demanded for years that everybody be in a home. And we've made it as easy as possible for people to be in homes. All the marketplace does is respond to what the government does. The government sets the rules. Don't blame banks and don't blame the marketplace for the mess we're in right now. I am tired of hearing that crap. So don't. I am tired of hearing that crap. Fighting the situation, taking and there are money all out to people they know they couldn't. There are it. already mechanisms in place. No, you know what? Because this pisses me off. Too many people don't listen. There are already mechanisms in place to do that. Are they doing their job? No. But what do you want to do? You want to bombard them with more regulations, more government? No, government, government screwed this problem up. What do you want? Everything. Well, you know what you've got? Because you, honestly, no, you know what you've got? The you banks, got Dodd Frank. The banks left. You got Dodd Frank now that's tying everybody's hands. You want more reform, more regulation? That's what you got. John, do you want more regulation? Is that what you want? Do you want Dodd Frank? 
Is that what you want? What did I say back at uh, Joe's uh, bar? I need more coffee. It's so so freaking easy. Decaf. Decaf. Strong stuff. Quiet for a minute. Hang on. Quiet for a minute. What did I say? Quiet for a minute. Or I'm going to ask you to leave. (laughs) You need to listen. Or I'm going to ask you to leave. It's so easy to sit here and just go and, 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 and say, I want more government to solve all, the, all these problems. I love you, and I love you. But you know what? If the Postal Service can't compete in the marketplace, I am tired of propping it up. I'm tired of the propping it up. The government hasn't propped it up at all. Up then you know what? The, you know, the you government want is what's dragging it down. The government's what, okay, then you know what? Then you know what? Shake my hand. Get the government out of your world. Postal Service... Get rid of all government restrictions. Impossible. You go out there. Oh, impossible. 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 Go out there and compete. I'll take every little restriction government puts on you. I'll get rid of it tomorrow. Yeah. Go out there and compete. Why wouldn't you like that? I don't think so. Why? Well, as I said before, there's... Go compete. There's a universal delivery... No, 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 no. Don't that talk. That has to be provided. No. A service that has to be provided to people across our country to help stimulate economies in rural areas. Ind- yeah. Independent business people. But people okay. in rural areas. UPS and FedEx is not phone phone servicing these people. Is not yeah. servicing these Joe, people. Joe, you know, you, 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 that's true. You got, big, you got, government, you got congressmen and senators that are in the back pockets of these bank presidents. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know what? You know what? Yeah. You got congressmen and senators who are in everybody's back pocket. You That's know what? Mine too. You got congressmen and senators right. who are in the back pockets of unions. Yes. Teachers unions. I'm in a 19% tax they all, bracket. Do you, do you acknowledge? Do you acknowledge, Melissa, that they all, both sides play this game? You bet. Both sides have their big lobbyists that try to get unions yeah. have to advocate for their for their employees. But do you? Or else we would have even less jobs and even more but jobs. But do you understand? Do you understand? And I also know that the amount of money that unions pay in to these politicians pales in comparison not, not true. Not to what true. corporations not true. pay in. No, 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 no. Yeah, it is. Not true. It not is. true. If you think that you're smoking something, there's no way. There's, they both influence. They both lobby and they both have a lot of money. The unions have tons of money and they use it they use it as they should to go ahead and try to get your people elected. They 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 both both sides play that game, right? Is it just big corporations? Well, I think there's a difference between advocating for thousands of workers and advocating for a oil company oh, to hold get on subsidies. A minute. Hold on a minute. When they're making profit, hold on. Okay, Go the ahead. Union, I think the there's a huge have, difference there. The union advocates for the, the people who are the union. For the better, workers. Yes, mm-hmm. but sometimes, in most, in my opinion, most of the time, unions are advocating just for those workers, not for the better of the country. Uh, well, it's... It, Look, look, I gotta be honest with you. We are gonna go nowhere and have no debate if the lobbyists on one side, those lobbyists who are lobbying for unions, if they're the good advocators and the lobbyists on hold on, and the lobbyists on the other side, they're big, bad, and evil. If that's what we think, then you and I will never be able so to. So are you for public campaign finance? No, not at all. Okay. Oh my god, that's So you think this. private you think the unions and the corporations both should be able to funnel as much money as they want to in the political campaigns. You think that's better as our system? Yes, and it should be open and transparent so every single voter knows exactly who a candidate's getting money from. Right. Yeah, so that would be a little bit better than what we have now. Absolutely. Instant open disclosure. Instant and open. And we can decide. You can decide. I'm a big gun guy. If a gun group gives me $100,000, you can decide if that angers you and take it out on me and don't elect me. The teachers union is never going to give me money. They'll give somebody else money. You can decide if that's a good or a bad thing. But if you try to, if you try to, look, folks, we're going to spend more money next year on French fries than we will on our presidential campaign. We don't spend too much money. I just want to know where the money's coming from. How would you feel about caps on uh, what you'd spend on a campaign, and how do you feel about caps? Uh, again, as a as a candidate for office. There should be no limit on what I want to raise and spend. If I want to be a knucklehead and spend a billion dollars on a campaign, Godspeed, let me. And if you want to give me a billion dollars, go ahead. Uh, God, let me. Packs. We keep going after this thing called packs. 
and most of us have no idea what a PAC is. Well, Our founders. But you don't see, you said you're not for that, but they don't have to disclose where their money is. No, no, no. I, I want their right. full disclosure. Which is not that, the PACs. That is a separate issue, and that's a separate problem. Okay. But in general, all PACs are any lobbying group is people coming together on, a, on, on something that unifies them, something they believe in, and they try to influence politicians. Our founders put that into the system. How can you how can you ever get that out? It's it's enabling you three, you can start your own pack tomorrow. And and yeah, but it's not us three do it. You know you know what it is you no, three. It's, it's no. everybody. Dog owners have a pack. Yeah, okay. Teachers have a pack. Yeah, okay. Car dealers have a pack. Auto mechanics have a pack. Postal service people have a pack. Yeah. Uh, corporations have a pack. Isn't it, Everybody has packs. Isn't it true that of the freshman congressmen, you have received more pack money than you're like in the top five or something like that? So I, I have no idea. But again, I will take money from anybody who wants to give me money if they agree with the things I believe in. This is Joe Walsh, here's what I believe in. I, hold on, I'm very pro-gun. Nobody anti-gun is knocking on my door to give me money. Right, so typically the way this works is people give you money if you believe in the things they're advocating. Uh, I am I am not the biggest friend of teachers unions. The teachers unions are not going to give me money. Right. Hey, they knock on the doors of typically Democrats to give them money. That's how this process works. All you want to do is try to elect people who won't be who won't be dictated by this money. And you know what? The most a PAC can give me an evil PAC is like five thousand dollars. But money, I have to raise. But money does influence the vote in Congress and the Senate. The most he and his wife can give me is five thousand dollars. Okay, I've got to raise over a million dollars to run. If I let five thousand dollars influence me, shame on me. But it's the lobbyists who are going to come in and say, Joe, here's a hundred grand. Vote for us on they this. They can't. They can't do. Vote that. for this on us on this. Med that's illegal. Lobby and say why it's good for us. But you understand, my friend, that's it illegal. But also no, 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 no. What has happened? No, the system, the way it's Blagojevich, did it. Oh, uh, Ryan did it. Isn't it? Stop. Let me make an important distinction. Yeah. Where are they? Every. <laughs> those are state officials. They. Well, oh no, no. This is important. Laws. Different. In federal laws. Nobody can come in and say, as a congressman, I can give you $100,000 if you vote this way. But they can't do that. Under current rules, wouldn't it be true that a co corporations can set up, or even private individuals, can set up, help set up numerous acts, and they have a veil of secrecy over who donates and who runs these things, and then these... Even though it looks like separate packs, it's, it's all the money's come from the same place, and all those packs Do you know can funnel money towards you. Yes, and, correct? And, yes, yes, okay. and and so you've got wealthy George Soros on the left side, and the evil Koch brothers on the other side, yeah. and they all fund these big super packs. Yeah. Both sides have them, right? right. They both right. got the billionaires. And do you know why they do that? Yeah. Why do they do that? Well, <laughs> stop. I know. One, why did they do that? One reason, uh, Soros. One thing I will say is Soros advocates for uh, things that are against his best economic interests, unlike the Koch brothers. No, no, no. But you, okay. you may, you may like so, the things. You just be honest, Melissa. Okay. You may, I have been no, so far. No, no, no. You, may, change now. you may like the things that Soros <laughs> advocates for. I probably like the things the Koch brothers advocate more. It's you know we all pick our own. We all pick our own. Well, you and I probably right. don't agree on much. No. So you've got wealthy liberals out there funding their interests. Right. You probably agree more with those interests. But why Why does a George Soros or the Koch brother do that? Koch brothers, why don't they because directly? They can. You know why? why but you know why? Because they can. But also because we've limited what the Soros and the Koch brothers can give directly to candidates. We've told George Soros, who's a multi-billionaire, you can only give me $2,500. Hmm. I'm not going to be able to influence them. So because we put that limit on what you can directly give me, they can go out now and form their own group. Mm -hmm. So I guess the point I'm trying to make is you can't take money out of politics. We've limited what people can give candidates, so now they've found other ways to influence. Yes. My answer is, 
quit playing these games. Don't get rid of these limits. No, I don't want public financing. Get rid of limits, but give me instant, instant disclosure. So once you find out that the Koch brothers gave me a couple hundred thousand dollars, I'm done with you. You take it out on me. The voters should know that Absolutely. instantly. I agree with you but there. If you want to keep playing this game where we limit what people can give, they're always going to find another way to get money, I think. I don't think you can ever get money out of politics, and you know what? I know I'm on tape. You shouldn't. Money's not the evil. But my question would be is that when you have so much influence on I mean, such an okay. even uh, small sector of our society, how can that be good for democracy? Who's the small sector of the people that have the money to donate. The billionaires, regardless of what side they're on, the people that have the money to influence congressmen. But that's why, that's the beauty of our system. That's why we have PACs and you're able to lobby because all these individual teachers, they don't have the influence that Pope Brothers of George Soros has. So what do they all these... together, they don't. No, yes, they do. What, what do all these... Indiv no, do you know how much the teachers union gives? Oh, my God. More than most corporations. So, and that's the beauty of our system. Teachers can get together, individual teachers, form a union, raise a lot of money and dues, and influence the process. God love them. That's how you give teachers an equal say. Gun owners can come together individually, form a union, and try to influence the process. People who believe in gun control, big powerful union, come together, raise money, and influence. And who's going to speak for the people that don't have the money to, to be, whether it be donating towards a union? I mean, look at the poverty level in our country. Who doesn't have a voice? You do the year growing. Oh, there's, if the people that don't have a voice are growing. And now you no, see all these states where Republicans are trying to disenfranchise people and keep voters out of the polls. And you want to tell me that well, everyone no, has a voice? They don't they don't. Any give me examples of people. Give me examples of people in our system who don't have a voice. Give me an example. I, I just told who? you. Who? Give How me about people living under the poverty level? They got a vote. They have the same voice. They got a vote. They got a vote. I'm going to use somebody to keep talking. Hey, somebody answer Melissa's question. Melissa, People who yes. live below the poor poverty, do they have a voice? As well, yeah. in other states as well. Remember the redistricting in this state, how they try to screw the Republicans? Republicans are doing that as well down in Texas to the Democrats. Both parties do it. Redistricting isn't the same thing as disenfranchisement. Actually taking literally the right to vote away from someone is not the same as the district did. What about the Black Panthers staying out in front of Philadelphia, threatening people not to come in and vote? Well, that's, that's in a, Philadelphia. That's a, that's a group out there that, uh, would, 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 how are you going to control that? You know? How, how are you going to, you know, you've got, you've got other groups like that that are doing Oh, yeah, that. you've got groups like that on both sides well, that are doing things like that. They're more radical. Sir, sir, are you a veteran? Are you a veteran? Yep. You know that the Postal Service gives priority to veterans? They're one of the largest uh, employers yeah. of veterans in our country. Uh, and you know that if Saturday delivery is eliminated, that you know a lot of your veterans' buddies are going to be out of a job? Okay. You know that, that the people, that the, your brothers are coming out from Iraq and Afghanistan now? Get them jobs. Huh? And they're cutting jobs. Think about it. Remember all that I said to you? And thank you for your service, sir. Thank you for your service. Yes, yes, let's go on to another topic. I want to find another thing that Melissa and I can disconnect. Executive order. I thought we can find some common ground. Where's the other thing? Patriot. Yeah. Now you know how many disappointed jobs. 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 Uh, look, I, I, I voted twice this year to extend uh, three or four provisions in the Patriot Act. I can't just because most of the as if they're about these extensions on things that were supposed to be sundown after four years. And now it's become the, the status quo because they keep on getting reinforced every year. Or every four years. And you know, we're losing our freedoms like left yeah. and right on this stuff. It's and it's, away right to privacy. And uh, there's no such thing. We've got to quit they were supposed to be sundown, that's the only reason it got passed the first time. Then all of a sudden, you've got so many bureaucracies throwing up off of this uh, uh, Homeland Security, uh, ICE, TSA. And then we've got a. Got a when I saw I, uh, uh, I, or TSA, 
uh, setting up roadblocks in Tennessee of all places. You know, what's this? Okay, what's that? Huge concern. Here's my here's my stance. Um, I, 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 I do not take uh, this infringement upon our liberties lightly. So I hear where you're coming from. Uh, we are at war. So would you agree the Patriot Act does infringe on people's rights to privacy? No one's going to argue with you on that. No, I wouldn't agree. I, I wouldn't agree. I wouldn't agree. Okay. I, I would say it's very capable of, and your government... Does that how it's enforced? It, absolutely. So the rest of your government needs to be vigilant to make sure that your government doesn't abuse the liberties of Americans. So you're okay with cameras and uh, stoplights and things like that? Absolutely not. No, 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 no. Absolutely not. So but when... At least a public space. When, I mean, like a lot of what the Patriot Act... But I have problems with that. I mean, when there are egregious examples, that's where it's, again, it's up to your government to say, uh-uh, that's going too far. Here's what I know, though, guys. Look, look important. We are at war with a radical strain of Islam, and it's a large group of people that I truly believe want to get their hands on weapons to blow us up and kill us. And I mean make 9-11 look like nothing. So, in that kind of, and you may disagree with me, but that's, that's what I believe. So I want my government, it's one of the things I want my government doing, is protecting us against that evil. And, and hold on, and having every tool at their disposal to beat it. Do I care if we're abusing any liberties of any terrorists who aren't American citizens? I could care less. We're, we're, we're at war. That's where, that's where your government needs to make sure, all these tools we've given them with the Patriot Act, we need to make sure that we don't abuse Americans' liberties. Well, Anytime Americans' liberties have already been abused. Warrantless wiretaps of Americans, Americans being held in detention without a trial or a right to be seen by a judge, and all a lot of this has been enabled by the Patriot Act. Do you agree that the FBI should be able to put a tracing device on an individual's private vehicle without a warrant? On suspected terrorist vehicles, yes. Without a warrant? Yes. Anybody could be a terrorist. They're doing that to regular people, not just terrorists. Again, 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 this, again, this is where, when there are even hints at violations, this is where your government needs to investigate it. If some, yes. So my question is, if it is a suspected terrorist, then why can't they go to a judge and say, these are why the reasons why we suspect this individual of being a terrorist, have the judge okay it. So we have some oversight and some balance. And, 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 and it's and, always and, worked no, before. No, no, why does that not work and, now? And in essence, that was what they're supposed to do. The, 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 the tools we've given our government to investigate terrorists are no different than the tools that governments had in place for years to investigate members of organized crime, for example. No different. The government has done things for a hundred years to investigate potential mobsters, and sometimes the government goes over the line, and we've got to slap them. But we've given them tools no different than that. So, and, 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 and look. So why do they need the Patriot Act to further uh, embolden the government intrusion on people's rights to privacy? I guess here's my answer, Melissa. I don't know. I don't know that I would have voted for the Patriot Act when it was first initiated. I, I've said this. After 9-11, would I have voted for a whole new government department called Homeland Security? Probably not. It's a big bureaucratic mess right now. So I probably wouldn't have. Uh, but now that we've got some of these things in place, look, I'd like to cut Homeland Security way back. But now that we've got the Patriot Act that's been in place for years... Um, so bad policy, just keep letting it No, up. no, no. My position is keep an absolute hawkeye on what it's doing and always and every single day and week try to improve what it's doing. But, but my God, I can tell you what, Melissa. We can't and it's not, keep not, an eye on them until after they've already abused I'm not, point, I'm not pointing to you. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying this generally. It's not if. What's your first name? Scott. Scott, it's not if. When the next terrorist attack hits our soil, and not 3,000 people, Americans, are killed, but 33,000. But because, hold on, because they will have gotten their hands on a dirty bomb, whatever, and 33,000 Americans are killed, 
and not you, Melissa, but there will be millions of Americans who will scream, where was my government? This is the balance. The Patriot Act won't necessarily oh, oh my, stop that. How do, you, how do you know? Okay. How do you know what how the Patriot Act How do you know it will? Well, here's, 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 here's what I'm going to tell you. No, 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 no. Exactly. There's plenty of laws in here's, place and operations. You know, you know, circumventing people's rights, their constitutional rights should never be justified. And I can't believe you of all people no, endorse that. No, no. Americans, American right. citizens' constitutional mm -hmm. rights should but never be violated. They are being violated by the no. Patriot Act well, right uh, this very minute. Well, if that's what it takes you, to keep me safe and never get bombed again, God yeah. bless them. That's like saying that my hair protects me from getting no. struck by lightning, so I'm not going to shave my head. What do you so want? far, it's hey, worked. Melissa, I haven't gotten struck by Melissa, lightning yet. Melissa, what do you want your government doing in this war? Tell me what you want your government doing. A, do you think we're at war? Oh, absolutely. Okay, what do you want your government doing to protect you? I want well, to protect you. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Every, first of all, put your number hand one, follow Follow no, no, the not. Constitution, okay, which follow, is not happening. Okay, then what? Then okay. what? Tell me what you... It's so easy, but tell me specifically, how do you want your government protecting you well, and everybody in this world? For one, a lot of this war it has to be fought through intelligence on the ground in places where they know there are terrorist influences, do you, how do you cooperating want to, with people in those areas of the world you to let, get them... Melissa, quick give and take. Will you let your government eavesdrop on known terrorist phone conversations to gather intelligence? Yes or no? Eavesdrop on known terrorists, not American citizens. Will you give them that tool or no? I think part of it would depend on your definition of known terrorist. Because that's where the problem is. Can you assume, with, let, let's take this, let's say we know it's not, hold on, hold on. How about we know it's not an American citizen? So get that out. So a suspected terrorist who's not an American citizen. Are you okay with your government eavesdropping on that person's well, phone call? it's going to happen. No, no are you does. okay with it? Well, do you want your government doing that's that? That's another thing. I know it can't be stopped, and they're going to do it. I don't have a huge problem with that. Melissa, My biggest problem is the Patriot Act taking away the rights of American citizens. But the Patriot Act... Removing due process. The Patriot Act also enables your government to do that, to eavesdrop on suspected terrorist phone conversations. They didn't do it, that before the Patriot Act? No. Are you, are you, are yeah, you okay... Did. Well, it dramatically enhanced the ability. Are you okay with your government doing that? Just answer yes or no. I think it's a very slippery slope. I get mad at politicians who never give yes or no answers. It's not a yes or no. It's not a black and white issue. Yes, it is. Yes or no. Do you want the government to protect you? No, because remember, Melissa, I got Americans. I'm told by guys like Joe, the government can't protect me. We need to get the government out of my life. I'm all for doing whatever it takes to protect us, as long as it works. There's so many things part of Homeland Security that it doesn't work. 25,000 people last year walked through uh, TSA agents at the Air Force and were caught with things. And TSA the people on the airplanes were the ones so that caught So why do we have so many, I mean, they're a big employer now. How many Absolutely. About, why do we have so many TSA agents Frisking people at the airport that it's not doing the job? Absolutely. And you know what? So let's get away and get done with that. So what do you want to do? No, he's saying only a meta, meta like we always sector. I want extreme luggage. This is where it gets interesting. Go through a go through a um, a uh, metal detector. Carry you packing a packing a weapon. How many uh, uh, Chicago? You're flying Chicago to St. Louis. You could be How many people they weapon. believe that passengers should be frisked like we are now? Yep. Raise your hand. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever it takes to make me safe. I don't care. I still say they should improve the TSA more like what Israel does with the profiling, but the problem is as soon as you mention profiling, the left comes unglued saying you can't do that. Well, as you probably don't believe in profiling, do you? What I do? <laughs> no, I don't believe in discrimination. What I don't believe in profiling, they claim it is discrimination. And what I believe is I am trying so hard to find Melissa and I. There's going to be one thing we agree on. Try to trick her, Joe. Hey, Joe. <laughs> Yes. Why is it with these terrorists and everything, how many of the last times we've had where it was a false flag, where the F turns out the FBI gave this guy, a wannabe or a would-be terrorist, a fake bomb and gave him a, de a target to go set off something, and then they swooped in and arrested the guy when the bomb didn't go off? It's almost entrapment. 
is what you're saying. Um, They've done it in yeah. Chicago, New York, okay. me, wherever else. Let me, let, let, me just, let me just say this. It almost looks like it's coming out more. More of this stuff is coming out of our own government than what's coming out from okay. our here overseas. At UNOS, here at UNOS, all of us are experts. We know a lot better than what our government officials know. Clearly you do, as far as what's been going on. We know that our government hasn't stopped any potential terrorist deaths. Well, look, we do we have to stop. It's, it's like we are all the experts. I'm a member of Congress, and I see, well, I see more stuff than the average person. But I don't even see close to what is really going on out there. But we all know we're experts, and we all know our government's never stopped an attack in the last 10 years. Oh my God, that must be a nice world to live in. We all know that. The government can't no, I know the government's done it's, it's, overboard to pat themselves on the back every time they set some clown up for a crime that he couldn't have committed without their help. Well, I know that. Do you think our government has done anything in the last 10 years to support any attack? Absolutely. Oh, thank God. Absolutely. You have to hear them. Down the ground. But there's also stuff where you see the people on the airplanes are catching the people because the TSA didn't I, catch I, them. I know that. Look, I know TSA's a mess. Look, guys, this isn't changing. What you got to ask yourself is... Do you, what do you want your government doing? Do you want your government not doing anything? I can just tell you, as someone who's always considered myself a civil libertarian, even I want my government doing damn near anything, not not encroaching upon our civil liberties, though I know they will overstep that bound, and then we got to whack them across the head. But, man, I, I want them going after the bad guys and killing them because they're out there. And when an American city in 30, not even 30 years, it within 10 years is blown up and 100,000 Americans lose their lives. What about the domestic threats from your um, Careful. homegrown militias Careful. and your Timothy McVeigh? Careful. Guys? How, how, oh, how can we just ignore those as if they aren't a domestic? No. Right? And, 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 you can't stop a bank robbery from a bank And your government doesn't ignore them. Your government's investigating daily domestic and foreign terrorists. I would simply tell you, in the world we live in right now, 99.5% of the threats that we get every day come from some strain of radicalism. The known threats. Well, the known and... The known uh, threats. Beyond, even beyond no, uh, uh, there are there are clearly wackos all over the political map that, for whatever reason, want to hurt people. That stuff with Timothy and um, McVeigh was not exactly homegrown. They are more recently discovered. I've seen articles where they're talking about a third person involved with that Timothy and McVeigh thing, where the guy was some radical Muslim. Interesting. The only thing I mentioned is, I think we'd be better served by protecting our borders more. Oh, yes. And by TSA. Look at all the stuff that's coming in across the southern border that they're sneaking in. I agree with you there. I Actually, our more southern border security is at all time high right now. There are less... Oh, no, that's what the numbers no, are. But I suppose, I suppose yeah. people can believe whatever they would like to the numbers indicate that it's actually more secure than ever. But you've got corrupt people working on the borders. Pardon? You've got corrupt TSA... Corrupt... Go ahead, here's, a good one. Here's, on here's a good one that will get everybody going. I know there's no common ground here, Melissa. <laughs> we have roughly 14 to 15 million illegal immigrants living in this country right now. 20, 20. Oh, hold on. Right now, right now. What do you want your government, what do you want your government, if anything, doing about that? You know what I don't want them doing? I don't want them um, enriching these private prison companies to build huge compounds to detain people in Texas or Arizona or wherever and funnel okay. government money she, she into started, private industry. She's starting to go on. That's what I told her. Oh, all right, Melissa, what do you want your government doing? I know what you don't want. They got 14 million illegal I want, I want, I want sensible paths to citizenship for people that can come here and Hold make on. a positive in on. impact this on our point society. Of view. This is a point of and view. even, I would say that there's even a lot of Republican support for that because they know how vital it is for a lot of industries that need these workers. That's a point of view. Thank you. Melissa actually gave me, hold on, she gave me a direct answer. You got 14 million illegal immigrants living here. Her solution is 
a some sort of direct path to citizenship. That's a great point of view. Go. So you got a question for If I come break into your house, make myself at home, eat your food, clean up after myself, you know, I'll take care of me, myself personally. Will you accept me in your family? What does that have to do with immigration? It's the same thing. Will you accept me in your family? It's the same thing. It's the country. No. Okay. I broke into your house. They're breaking into our country. It's a it's a As congressman, that's a false equivalent. It's not. Hold on. Two provocative question. Okay, go. What do you want your government doing with 14 million illegal immigrants? Right now, to park themselves, they're taking away all the incentives to do that. They come here for. What if they don't leave? They will leave. 14. How are you going to make? I'm not 14 million. How are you going to make them leave? They're half a bunch of people. How are you going to make them leave? Actually, our country is not going to do that. Don't talk about it. What are you going to do? What do you want your government doing with 14 million illegals? And I think they will self deport. Okay. What do you What do you want your government doing with anything? Whenever they come into uh, the government's possession, either by uh, getting arrested, committing a, committing a crime, or get pulled over, and they don't have proper documentation, I, a driver's okay. license, a valid driver's license, whatever the case may be, I think the government should deport them. If they continue to come back, you charge the government from the country that they come from. Hey, everybody, by the way, uh, Congressman Joe is buying everybody here a drink, either alcoholic or not alcoholic. So belly up to the bar, order something. Coke, coffee, whatever you're drinking, or the real stuff, whatever you're drinking. What would you do? I'm, I'm treating you to something. Would you buy something? What would you do? 14 million illegal immigrants here right now. Easy. verify and go after the companies that hire them. Go after the companies that have hired them. What would you do? Well, I got a better story. When my dad came over on the boat from Italy, Ellis Island, they almost sent him back because they said he had a rash. And what happened, they had made him long underwear, wool underwear, and he was allergic to it, and he had his rash. So at Ellis Island, you go back, you got a rash. They took off the long underwear, his rash went away. Boy, what a different day. And he had somebody else in the family that he had a job here. Yeah, you can go for her. And he became a citizen. And that's yeah. As far as I'm concerned, they got to come over here and go through the proper channels to be a citizen. <laughs> what would you do? You have 14 million illegals right now, maybe 22. What would you do with them? If anything, probably deport them. If you're in another country illegally, they're going to deport you. You would want your government to deport them. What would you advocate? I think they should do what they should have been doing for years and enforce the laws that are already on the books. Uh, amnesty only works when you have a closed border. It's meaningless when you have an open, porous border and they keep flooding in and you give them amnesty. What I would look at is if, as I agree with them, if they're committing crimes, stealing, killing people, whatever, they should, and they get caught, they should be deported. If they're already here and they're contributing to society, Give them a path to citizenship so they can stay here. If they're yeah, being that's productive. The they committed a crime the minute they crossed the border, though. True. That's the, that's the other problem is they committed a crime so they can't cross the border. What would you do with them? Send them back. Send them back. What would you do with them? One of the, I want to preface what I would do with them. I knew that you wouldn't give me an easy answer. So order something. Everybody get a turn. One of the big problems in this country is welfare. Yes. yes. Welfare. Yes. They, we got the welfare on drugs and committing crimes. Before you get welfare, you could get drug tested, buddy. Right here. Except and, it's all right. Oh, do I see a break? You're not getting. You're not getting. You're not getting. You're not getting any food stamps and, and stuff. The yeah. problem is they've already proven that the cost of those programs. It costs more to test people than it saves in what you pay out in welfare. Well, it might, so, it might and the thing that. is, if we want to do that, I'm all for it. If we also test, let's test the uh, CEOs that get government subsidies. Let's test college students that get government loans. Let's test uh, mortgage holders, uh, mortgage holders that get a tax rebate for their mortgage. Let's test hey, everybody. Melissa, We're going to start testing. Hey, people. Melissa. Yes. I'm starting to fall for you a little bit. Uh, <laughs> what would you two do with the 14 million illegal immigrants here? Send them back. Hire 
very close. What would you do, raising your hand? I would definitely want them to be verified. I want to hold the disclosures responsible. And not only do I want the individual parents or whoever came in, I want their families to go too, even if they were born here and they came in illegally. And I also want to know, what about the immigrants that are on the list doing proper, you know, rules to come into the country that are waiting and waiting that we welcome these other people and try to... I found common ground. Get ready, you're about to hold my hand. What about get rid of the anger babies? The process of getting into this country legally is much too cumbersome. We need to make it easier. Everybody agree with me on that? Yes. Absolutely. It takes way too long and it's too ridiculously bureaucratic to go through the steps to get into this country legally. We need to streamline that. Well, you were keeping a lot of good people out. Oh, yeah, yeah. But you know what? When you get off the boat, they already got a list of known and unknown people. She's still on the boat. When people get off the boat, I have a friend. She's Filipino. She's here. She's married. Has a family. She has a mother, sisters, brothers in the Philippines. And she was telling me about this other lady that came in illegally. And I'm like, she's a good person. She's not here illegally. She's a good person. And she's got her family. She's got her husband. She's got her children. She's got her kids. And she's doing it the right way. She's not trying to be a bad person. 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 She's not trying
No, I want to hear it. The problem is that the, in the Constitution it says, yes, they are an American yes. citizen. But what they become is an anchor baby to bring in. One child is born, 12 people come into the country. That doesn't happen in practice. Oh, sure yes. does. Hey, I'm gonna. Hey, guys. If you have not gotten something, I'm buying everybody a drink. Something. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Joe. Uh, and make sure. Hey, make sure I got. Make sure you leave the same All I had was coffee. I got one. I got one. No, 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 no. I'm buying. I'm buying. You. That's what I said. Oh. Yeah, if you want, I'll just get this thing for the coffee. That's all I have. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Can we talk with you? Uh, can I be up here? Good talking with you. Thank you. Thank you. So we're not always the same type. I respect all the time. This is the most important. I didn't think that was my head out.